guys, I'm Tara with Tara Simon Studios and today we have my amazing coach Jeremy, say hi! What's up? Jeremy is a coach of mine at TSS, he does amazing, amazing work with his students and I'm so happy that he was able to jump out of sessions real quick, come do a couple tutorials with us that we're going to film for you guys and we were talking um, before we were filming and, and um, just about some of his students and about the male voice in general and I figured since I had a dude today that we would go over some male issues and Jeremy was talking a lot about how um, some of your students as well as, as you earlier on in singing career had issues finding that mix, right? Why don't you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that? So a lot of times as a guy singer, um, especially when you come from the background that I have, it's either croon or falsetto and so the last um, the last part of our voice really to, to develop or to be developed is our mixed voice. And so a lot of my students, we have to really, um, so before they don't tire themselves out or so they begin to understand that there is another place that they can put upper notes um, or higher notes is their mixed voice. And so we work in that, that area. Absolutely. And it is kind of that, that same issue for females too, even though it might be a little bit more pronounced sonically for men, but uh, that issue still remains the same for females that, that like sought after holy grail mixed voice, right? I mean, if I think there's any, any, hey, how do I do this Tara email? It's, it's on mix. So um, this can go for females too, but because we have Jeremy here today, we're going to focus on the male range and talk about the, the placement that Jeremy's feeling as well as what we're hearing sonically when it happens so that you guys, guys, uh, that are trying it at home, <laughs> See? Uh -huh. you guys can try it at home and try to match your feeling and your sound to what Jeremy's doing because Jeremy happens to be an amazing technical singer as well as mixer. So you're really gonna get a great example. He's gonna go out of his comfort zone and show us even what's wrong, like the bad way to do it, but then what when when it comes down to it, he's gonna give you the real example of how he really sings and what when it sounds right. So um, we were also talking about exercise. So there's an exercise we do at the studio called One. Um, and there's a couple reasons why it's great for mix and there's also a couple reasons why it's difficult um, of an exercise in general. I'll give the difficulties first. So one is supposed to be a jaw isolation exercise, but a lot of people end up moving and chewing mm -hmm. through the exercise by going one, 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 one. So they play the diphthong of the oo instead of the o, uh, and then instead of dropping their tongue up and down for the n, they drop their jaw up and down for the uh, 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 n at the end. So instead of one, 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 it ends up being one, 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 one. Like, fish breathing, mm -hmm. right? So um, if you're gonna try it at home, please do it in front of a mirror so that you see what you're doing because it feels good to move your jaw. It's what we do every day when we speak. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I do it a lot. Yeah, Just ask Jeremy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, you're fired. Anyway. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's really easy to do. So if you don't see what you're doing, then you're not gonna notice it because it's gonna feel natural to move your mouth, okay? And the good news of the exercise and the reason why it's really great to practice mix is because I give you grace. Even though it's hard mouth-wise, it's just one single melody note. There's nothing that changes about it. So you repeat the number one five times. One, two, three. Yeah. One, 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 one. Four or five. One, 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 one. It's five. <laughs> five times, okay? So we're gonna start low. Um, so most of the time when I'm warming women up, I start on um, I start on that F3, but for you, let's start on, oh, I don't know, what do you like to start on, Jeremy? You start on that D. D? Mm -hmm. D3, okay. So D3 for you guys who are carrying and counting, and Beautiful. Okay, now for those of you who don't know the sound of mix, 
He's, well, you can, and you can tell me if I'm right, Jeremy, but you started mixing, we went up to F sharp, okay? You started mixing right around C, C sharp-ish. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> Do you know which one it was exactly? Um, it was probably on that C sharp. C sharp, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so this note right here. Now, you can rewind this back and listen to see if you can hear any difference. You're probably not going to be able to hear it. You have to very, very trained ear to hear the granular difference between his chest and his mix because it's so friggin' good, okay? <laughs> However, I wanna be, I wanna also give our listeners a demonstration of what maybe not so smooth a mix attempt okay. would sound like. Okay. Sometimes when you can do mix though, it's really hard to go back. So I'm just saying, like, we might need to give them a couple tries here. Okay. Um, we're not editing this, so, you know, it is what it is. So let's try though to give them an attempt that fails. Like, okay. some, like act like you're, you're a listener who's not really a mixer yet, but they're kind of getting it sometimes and kind of okay. feeling like it's not consistent. And let's see if we can give them what it would sound like for you to try and fail and then try again and get it. Okay. okay? All right. And real quick before we start that, tell them on the on the right way, just for since you did it perfectly this time, where do you feel it when you go to mix right there? When I go to my mix, it's really like right here. It's right here. It's like a like a um, a chin strap or a face mask almost right there. It's coming. It's not quite all the way up in my head voice, but it's not not all the way in my chest voice. It's right in the mixture of which is why it's your mix. Hello. <laughs> Would you say <laughs> literally? <laughs> Would you say that it's frontal here, or if I drilled like a hole in your head, would it be like in the middle of your head? It would be in the middle of my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for you guys that when I'm, when I'm talking to you about frontal placement, we talk about belting, I don't want you to get confused. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between one, one, which is very frontal and his, it's too low for me to mix there, but like a one, which is more of a mix for me and Lee, it's too low for me mm -hmm. to mix there, so it sounds funny. But <laughs> that feeling is is right in the middle of our heads. And it might be a little different for you. Everybody's uh, uh, nasal passages and the anatomy, the physiology of their skull is a little bit different, different shapes, different sizes, different um, resonation cavities. But for the most part, we found that it the mix should feel in the middle of your head, like kind of right about here if I were touching the middle part of my skull. The frontal is more belt, and up here is more head, but we're focusing on mix today. So let's give them an example of what maybe something wrong sounds like, okay. and then we can stop, regroup, if you can, okay. and, and then do it right one more time, okay? okay? And if you could, point to where you're feeling what. Okay. So point to wherever it changes, point to where you're feeling the resonance for them, okay? okay? All right, here we go. We'll start on the D again. Mm -hmm. All right. Same exercise. One, two, here we go. attempt the mix. The mix can't happen when you're fresh out of chest voice notes. The mix has to segue for it to sound smooth, okay? Mm -hmm. So he pressed the chest. Now, there are different instances where it's okay to press chest, especially like let's say if you were singing a song and the highest note was F and you hit that note like, I don't know, two times in the song mm -hmm. and it was a belt song. Well, it's perfectly appropriate for you then to omit mix and press chest up so that you get yeah. those notes in chest. Yeah. However, if you're singing a song that's, that warms its way through that melody a lot of times, 
and it's vocally fatiguing, it's really not that contemporary of a song, it might be something Broadway, it might be something more like a, a Buble or a Groven or something like that, well then you have every right to start mixing earlier, which is what he demonstrated in the first go around of one, okay? Another um, example of of a, an improper or a failed attempt at mix would be if you're cracking. So if you went from like, one to one, like if it just kind of bottomed out or goosed out, so we say. Yes. Jeremy's too cool for school to do that though. I will but. try, I don't <laughs> mind goosing out for you. It's fine. That's great. You know, I feel for my pretty people, it's fine. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. And actually we may do an, a, a whole other video on puberty actually, because it's, it's something that a lot of our students deal with, even some of our celebrity students right now as we speak are dealing with it. So so um, we basically wanted to create this video for you guys though so that you could have a good feel for what a good mix sounds like segueing up. And we think that one is a great exercise because again, it repeats those notes. So it gives you multiple chances within one modulation to practice the placement. So if you may not get perfect placement on the first of the ones, but maybe you get it on the fourth or fifth attempt within that modulation. And there's no shame by the way, especially if you have a piano or a piano app at home and stopping this exercise or stopping this video and harping on a note or two, going up a couple and then going down a couple to really work that break. Because, you know, your break is what, Jeremy, for you, it was between like what, a, a C and an F? Okay, so what, C4 and F4? So if that's, if it's similar for you guys out there listening, then really work the C through the F about two to three times more than you would work any other part of your register because that's the part that needs smoothed out the most. Okay, does that make sense? So Jeremy is an excellent example of what perfect male mixing sounds like. He's a perfect specimen of mixing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> so <laughs> so um, if, you, if you're a guy and you're looking to train, this is your dude. He's amazing at that and he's hand trained by me. He does amazing work at the studio and as you can hear, he sounds what he preaches, doesn't practice it, he sounds like what he preaches. Um, he's, a, he's a perfect example of it. So make sure you check out the description uh, box below. It's got a link for private lessons, got a link to our eight week course. And if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram. We create um, awesome content there to help you go from good to great as well. Follow us on YouTube by subscribing to the channel and hit the notifications button and we will see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much, Jeremy. No problem. Peace out, Girl Scouts. <laughs>